In this video, we're going to learn about conditional probability. The conditional probability is defined this way. If A and B are events, then the conditional probability, which has the following notation, so P stands for probability, here we have events A and B, but notice there is a vertical line in between them. So that's, um, that's the notation for conditional probability. So what is the conditional probability? It's probability that B occurs given that A occurs. And of course, as we do an example, this will all make more sense, but now let me just read formula for finding conditional probability. So to find conditional probability of event B happening, given that event A also happens. So we'll need to set up a fraction in the denominator of the fraction, we'll have to put the number of outcomes corresponding to event A. That's the one that stands in the second place, and that's the one that we call a condition. And in the numerator, we, we need to find um, or write down the number of outcomes corresponding to the following, A and B, to the following event, A and B happening at the same time. So let's just try an example, and it, this all will make more sense. In this example, we have to consider the random experiment of dropping the ball onto the spinning wheel. And uh, that spinning wheel contains the following numbers. So it has red numbers, and it has black numbers, and then two green numbers, or two green slots, zero and double zero. And as far as the numbers, they go up to 36, and then some of them are red, and some of them are black. So it's one of those spinning wheels that you find um, at the casino. So let's look at the first question. In the first question, we have to find the following probability. How do we understand what it means, or what it says? Well, that's how I'm going to rephrase this. I need to find probability that the ball hits an even number. Now that vertical line, I will always translate using word given. So that vertical line stands for the word given. So I need to find probability that the ball hits an even number given that that number is black. So that's the meaning of this notation. Well, let's try to find probability. We're going to set up a fraction. Now, what's going to be in the denominator of this fraction? Well, according to the formula, in the denominator of the fraction, we have to, to put a number of outcomes corresponding to A. Well, A is the one that follows or that go, comes after the vertical line. Uh, so that's event A. That's our condition. So denominator always corresponds to the condition or event that follows the vertical line, black. In other words, I have to ask myself, how many black numbers do I have on that well? Well, here all of them are listed, and if we count them, we're going to find that there are 18 of them. So that means that the denominator will be 18. So the denominator always corresponds to the event that follows the vertical line or the word given. Next. Next is the numerator. In the numerator, I need to put the number of, number of outcomes corresponding to A and B. Well, remember that word and I can rephrase as both or at the same time. So in this case, the nu numerator will correspond to the number of slots on that wheel that are both even and black. Both even and black. Let's count how many numbers like that we have. So both even and black. Well, to find the number of numbers, the number of slots that are both even and black, first I'm, I can focus on, let's say, on the black numbers, and they're all here. They're all listed over here. But among them, I need to find even. And that's by doing that, I'll find all numbers that are both even and black. So among black numbers, I have how many evens? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think it's just 10, right? So I have 10. So it's the number of numbers or slots on that spinning wheel. They're both even and black. 
Well, and that's probability. The only thing that we can simplify it. So let's 10 and, a, 10 and 18 can be divided by 2, right? So that reduces to 5 over 9. And that's going to be the answer here. We're just going to leave all the answers in the fractional form. Well, actually, it even says here, when finding a probability, we'll write it in fraction form. So um, we'll just find the simplest form of a fraction and do it like that. Okay, so a, that's the probability. Let's try it again. Question B. Question B is written this way. Let's interpret it. Here we have to find probability that the ball hits a number that's greater than 30 given that it's red. Once again, when I see the vertical line, I know I'm dealing with conditional probability and I'm translating that line as word given, given that it's red. I'm going to set up the fraction. Um, I like to start with denominators every time I calculate probabilities. So the denominator is generally a little bit easier to find. So in this case, remember that denominator corresponds to what? The denominator corresponds to the condition, which is red. In other words, I have to write down how many red numbers I have on the wheel. And according to this description, these are all red numbers. If we count them, we're going to find 18. So 18 red numbers. Now the numerator should be the number of slots on that spinning wheel that are greater than zero, uh, I'm sorry, greater than 30 and red. So I'll write like that, greater than 30 and red, meaning at the same time. How do we find those numbers? Well, I just need to focus on kind of like one category here and within that category find the other category. So I'll focus on category red. They're over here, all those red numbers. And within red numbers, I need to find how many I have greater than 30, right? So within red numbers, I have how many greater than 30. Now greater meaning that I'm not including 30 itself, right? So I have to start right after 30. So I'm not counting 30, so it's going to be 32, 34, 36. So here, I'll use different color. When I have this description, the numbers that I found are 32, 34, and 36. Right, that's what we got. Um, how many we have here? We have three. Well, that means that the numerator will be three. And that's a fraction that gives us probability. Of course, we can simplify it. And um, that's going to be one over six, right? Both numerator and denominator can be divided by three. So one over six. OK, so that's the answer here. Next question, C. In the next question, it says, find probability that the ball hits a red number given that that number is greater than 30. Let's try that one. Starting with the denominator. The denominator corresponds to what? The denominator corresponds to the condition greater than 30. So how many numbers? And so when I focus on the denominator, I don't focus on anything else. I don't think about red or any anything else. I only focus on the numbers that are greater than 30, ignoring anything else, uh, any other descriptions. So from the entire world, how many numbers that are greater than 30? Well, the numbers are 31, that's greater than 30, 32, 33, and so on and so forth. Well, I guess I can write them all down. 34, 35, 36. I mean, there are not that many to write. Right? Um, and I went up to 36 well because 36 is the largest number on that well. So how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. That's going to be the denominator. That's the denominator. I only focus on the condition. Numerator. The numerator will be the number of numbers. They're both red 
and greater than 30. So here, the numerator, numbers that are red, and greater than 30. Uh, let's count them. Actually, we just did, right? Remember, we had to do it for the previous example. Greater than, greater than 30 and red, well, it's exactly the same as red and greater than 30, so we have 3. Otherwise, um, you know, if we, had, if we didn't do it before, then I would focus on all red numbers and among them I would find how many greater than 30, right? Because I only need numbers that are both red and greater than 30 at the same time. So 3. 3 over 6, that's same as 1 half. And, um, well, that means that it's going to be kind of easy to say this time. It means that it's a 50% chance that the ball hits a red number, given that that number is greater than 30. So let's do two more. Next one is this probability, a fine probability that the ball hits double zero, given that it's green. Let's try. Fraction bar. Now the denominator corresponds to the condition green. How many green numbers are there on the wheel? Well, according to this chart, we have one, two, two green numbers. So that's going to be the denominator. And now the numerator will be a the numerator, let me put it here, um, number of slots, there are double zeros and green at the same time, at the same time. Well, let's look at the chart. If I focus on all green numbers, how many of them will be double zeros? Well, there's only one like that, so if, if I'm looking at double zero, I can see how it is. Well, it's double zero, obviously, and it's green at the same time, right? So how many numbers like that we have? How many slots like that we have on the wheel? Just one, which means that the numerator will be one. So the chance of that event happening, or the chance for that conditional probability is one half, which is 50%. And the last example, or the last question within this example, is to find probability that ball hits a green number given that it's odd. Let's set up the fraction. Here's the fraction, the denominator. The denominator corresponds to the con condition odd. How many odd numbers do we have on the wheel? Let's think. So we know we have numbers between 1 and 36 and um, also 0 and double zero. So 0 and double zero, they're neither even or odd. We're not going to um, count them. But the rest of them, 1 through 36. Well, if it's 1 through 36, it means that half of them will be even, half of them will be odd. So there are 18 odd numbers on the wheel. 18. Now, the numerator should be the number of slots on the wheel. They're both green and odd at the same time. So do I have any numbers here or slots? They're both green and odd at the same time. Well, no, right? Because if I look at all green numbers, none of them are odd. Um, <clears throat> and if I look at all odd numbers, none of them are green. So that means that the numerator this time is going to be zero. And because it's zero, probability is also going to be zero. Well, the reason it happens here um, for this conditional probability, we got zero result, it's impossible event. Well, because those two events are independent events. So when we work with independent events and we're trying to find conditional probability, we're always going to end up with zero. But as you can see, 
just by using the formula, you can obtain that result without maybe even thinking that they were independent. So that's how you calculate conditional probability.